so once again, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Um, I've kind of already introduced myself a bit, but so I'm I'm Adam Cardos, uh, the founder of AAS Press and also the Gamerized Dictionary. Um, let me share screen a bit there. Okay, there we go. Uh, so there's a bit of an image of our uh, materials. And um, so what we really focus on, what we believe in at AAS Press is just creating materials for young learners that are as motivating as possible. Um, something that I think um, Rob Peacock um, talked about before, motivation uh, is one of the key things to, to learning a language. Um, in fact, perhaps the key thing. Uh, and especially when that comes to children, um, if you can't get them motivated, uh, then they don't get very far. Uh, so this is um, something that's really central to everything that we do. Um, so it was interesting watching all the presentations today. Um, I kind of prepared for a talk mainly focusing very much mainly on uh, the comic graded readers uh, that we have. We have um, other things such as activity books and vocabulary, vocabulary learning app as well that go along with our materials. Um, some of those, I feel that they stray a bit away from what's kind of what purists would see as uh, extensive reading. So I'll touch on them a little bit at the end, um, and I'll I'll really focus just on the stories and what we were trying to do in creating the Awesome Adventure series and the Awesome Adventure readers. So uh, I want to start off with one thing that I consider to be a fact. I don't know if um, everyone out there agrees, but I believe that all children love reading stories. Um, I think that a lot of the time you hear people saying, oh, no, some kids like reading, some kids don't. Deep down, I believe in every child, there is a lover of stories. I think all humans, um, our brains are, are geared to just love a good narrative. This kind of goes back to what Rob Waring was saying in his, his excellent presentation about um, how to create uh, a really you know, deep, rich narrative, even in a graded reader. Um, what What is important in readers for children is story, 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 right? So I think this 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 fact, some people might want to debate. Um, and if, if it was as simple as that, all children just loving reading stories, um, if we really follow what um, extensive reading can do for children, um, then this is really great news. We should just be able to, you know, open the doors to the, to the school library, let the kids run in, get absorbed in a book and just watch them sky, watch their language abilities skyrocket, watch them develop, you know, a sense of grammaticality, um, you know, develop large vocabularies and all this kind of thing. Um, and I think that that's possible. And I have seen some, chil I've seen some amazing um, chil children who have just really gotten into reading, plowed through books, um, and sometimes developed some just startling language abilities in English, uh, almost exclusively through reading. Uh, they might take, you know, an hour language class a week or whatever, but besides that, they just, you know, just through reading a lot of books that was at the right level and the right, um, you know, just having the right conditions. And they've really, really, you know, just become a, a great at English. However, um, what a lot of us, if, if anyone out there is, um, does reading with children and have tried to open the library doors to the children and have them run in and just pick up books and get absorbed. Um, some of the things that we do often unfortunately see is this, like this poor child here, kids getting sleepy, kids messing around with each other, flipping pages. Somebody mentioned uh, flipping before, I think I, I, when I was talking to Joe, you know, children, it's hard to kind of monitor. I think a, a lot of graded reading or extensive reading programs have uh, tasks embedded just to confirm that the kids are, or the students are actually reading and not just sort of flipping through things. Uh, and with, especially with kids, flipping is a big thing. You know, you'll see them in a reading class and you're like, there's no way you're reading that fast. Um, but yeah, flipping pages, endlessly trying to choose a book. Uh, obviously we want to give them autonomy, but sometimes they'll come into the class and be like, not this one, not this one. This looks kind of interesting, not this one. And your whole um, time allotment for them to be, you know, doing reading independently on their own uh, just evaporates and disappears. So I think that this is, is a bit of a challenge. And I think for me, I think the reason reasons for it are kind of clear. So I think 
all children love reading good read, reading stories, but what they really need is the right story. And a lot of the time they haven't found that and they haven't experienced that. And on the on the other side, uh, a really important thing to think about is that some of these kids in the back of their mind, what they've got going on is I'd rather be doing this um, for anyone who doesn't know. This is uh, an image from Fortnite, which is an incredibly popular um, game, not just for kids, adults, all ages. Um, but this is something I hear kids talk about quite a lot. So exciting characters, incredibly interactive. There is story in it and that kind of thing. Um, if they are, for example, older elementary school students and we want to get them excited about reading, it's really important that we don't give them this. Um, and this is this the bug is on the rug. That might be the most common uh, early re reading sentence. I've I've actually created this out of nowhere. This is not an actual reader, um, but yeah, I mean, if 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 they can't really read that much and they're they're just practicing decoding and stuff like that, and we're giving them this, sure, this is you know decoding practice, but this isn't really this is this is what I'd call a non-story. Uh, there's nothing happening here. There's nothing that's activating their brain, getting them thinking about the characters, what's going to happen next or anything like that. This is a drill uh, disguised as some kind of a story. Okay, so this is a bit of an exaggeration. Um, obviously, we saw in the Oxford, um, uh, Rob Peacock's presentation before, some really colorful and exciting uh, readers for, for young learners. So obviously, they're not all, <laughs> they're not as bad as this. But um, even then, when you have an older elementary school student um, even if you've got something with color, um, often these readers are written for children much younger than them. Uh, they might be written for a three or four year old, um, and they just might not offer them enough to kind of sink their teeth in and get them excited. Um, and at the same time, even readers for three or four year olds who are native speakers often are despite the story being a little bit too babyish for an old, older um, elementary school student, are still linguistically quite complex. The vocabulary in kids' books for, you know, three and four-year-olds, they have all kinds of uh, <coughs> challenging vocabulary in them and grammar for that matter. So a, an, a really interesting concept um, that I've seen a little bit written about um, in the context of, of extensive reading is the idea of a home run book. Um, so a home run book is is the idea of of you know that that book that a child reads or you know, it could be older I'm not sure that that kind of ignites that first love and that desire to read. Um, for yeah, so there's research that shows that uh, children that report enjoying reading often will have had this kind of home run reading experience where they've read a book that just just got them in and they loved it and. Um, yeah, the rest is history. They just loved reading after that. And I can remember mine. Uh, I remember going, I think I was probably eight or nine years old. And I went on a family vacation. We were on the beach. There was lots of fun things to do. My parents had given me a copy of Dr. Doolittle. Um, it was a chapter book kind of thing. There were some illustrations and stuff in it. But I got so into that book that I just shut off everything else that was around me and read it from beginning to end. Uh, and then it was just like, give me the next one in the series, give me the next one in the series. And that kind of got me going. Um, to, just to get things a little bit interactive, can anyone put in the chat, um, if you've had, um, when you were younger, a home run book, a book that really you know made you love reading or made you uh, get interested in reading, uh, what was it? Put it in the chat there, I'd love to see that. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Absolutely. Apparently, Harry Potter is quite a common one these days. Um, Lord of the Rings is very intimidating, isn't it? Because it's quite a it's quite a large um, book to start with. Too old for Harry. <laughs> now, yeah. Uh, Anne of Green Gables, that's a good one. Some some Canadiana where the wild things are. Okay, so that's that's a really early one. That's kind of a um, a pic, more of a picture book for for younger children, but very rich in language as well. That one is. Yeah, so a lot of us can remember these experiences that we've had that that just that one book 
that gets them excited about reading. Now, if a lot of early reading looks like this, uh, and again, I'm exaggerating, obviously, you know, at least most of these readers will have color, um, but if they're kind of this drilly experience of just sort of practicing decoding and not, we're not giving them the opportunity to have a story that uh, will draw them in, then, you know, it's unlikely that we're going to push that, that magic button that kind of gets them really going and wanting to read. So this idea of the home run, uh, home run books is something that's kind of in our mind when we've created our, our readers. Now, we haven't got a million books, um, and not every child is going to have a different book that's a home run for them. But we've tried to create books that, uh, from an early stage, even with a lower level of, of English, kids can really sink their teeth in and hopefully have that home run experience. Uh, and you know, I have seen it happen um, quite a few times. So introducing the um, Awesome Adventure series readers. Um, so I'm going to actually give you a walkthrough of a few of our books and show you how, how all this works and how it looks. Um, but here, uh, right, so one of the points is that there, there are illustrations that really draw the children in. They have to have a reason even before they start reading a book to read it, right? Um, one of the big things, again, with autonomy, when a child chooses to read something instead of is told, hey, read this, it's your homework, um, it's so different. Their, their motivation is completely different. Their level of engagement is completely different. And often just, you know, that that's, you can't, sometimes you can judge a book by its cover or children will do. Um, so uh, yeah, they, if they're looking through the books and they go like, wow, this is really exciting. I want to check this out. That's going to be a really nice entry point and it's going to heighten their motivation going into the reading experience rather than I think Rob Peacock mentioned the experience, the motivation in the context of, you know, it's daunting before you read a book, but once you get to the top of the mountain, you feel satisfaction. I think that's very true, but also with children, um, if they're looking at something that looks daunting, if they're looking at that mountain, more often than not, they'll choose. They don't have the the um, other motivators like, oh, this is going to be good for my English or that sort of thing that will get them in. So often that more of an intrinsic interest and more of an intrinsic motivation is what's going to uh, really work for them. Um, or, sorry, so um, we use a comic for format. Um, they're comic graded readers, and this allows for a much more complex story. Um, going back to Rob Waring's presentation, um, yeah, story, 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 and you need to have, uh, what was the word uh, that he used? A premise, you need to have a strong premise in the story. So these are stories that even at a pre-A1 level, they have a strong premise, the characters have motivations, um, and till, yeah, right. So it's a more complex story, and that's enabled uh, by the il illustrations. Um, so the stories have meaningful underlying themes. Okay, I feel like I've said that. Um, the stories are told in a humorous way. Um, this is also very, very difficult to do at a low level uh, of English for children, uh, but the illustrations kind of allow more to be said by the words. And I'll give you an example of this uh, in just a moment. Um, yeah, so they balance the linguistic demands and the cognitive needs and interests of children. Again, going looking at a child who is uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or even in their young teens, um, they need something interesting. They can't you know, just if they're just decoding things or reading about the bug on the rug, um, it's not going to keep them interested for very long. So the illustrations allows this to happen. <clears throat> um, so here are some of the other things that I didn't focus on as much, but we do have um, audio books that really make the uh, stories come alive. We also have a music album, which is graded music that is story based. So it's not um, how's the weather or colors or that sort of thing. There are songs that tell a story uh, with simple language. And I will give a short sample of that as well after. Finally, another kind of cool thing that we have, we've got some embedded tasks in the stories um, and not, not the kind of, not comprehension tasks. Uh, I think it was Dorothy that uh, commented, you don't wanna have, um, um, tasks that really interrupt the reading where you stop and then you have to answer 10 questions and it interrupts the flow. What we've included are uh, choose your own adventure elements. Um, some of our 
earlier readers have um, at the end, there's a word search. So that will, once you've finished it, you can look back through the um, story and find hidden words and decode a message. Uh, there's little sort of interesting tasks that, that, that are more kind of like games and help the, the children kind of become interested and more um, involved in the story. Okay, so that's an overview. So without further ado, I'm going to just uh, show you a few examples of our stories. Um, all right, so this is from our level one series. So this is pitched at a pre-A1 level. Uh, it might be for learners that are a little bit beyond phonics or still kind of working a bit on that. Um, yeah, so this first, each of our uh, levels is comprised of four readers. Um, four stories, and each one can kind of stand alone, um, but they lead into each other. So for a really deep story to take place, sometimes there's a certain amount of length it needs. Um, but if you give, you know, a book that's too long uh, to a child, they might kind of lose engagement. So each book is a standalone story that kind of has a cliffhanger ending and really gets the kids to want to move on to the, the next one. So in this first one, moving uh, the main character, Leo, um, his father uh, gets transferred a lot, so he, he keeps getting moved to different houses. And each time he's um, trying to make find his way, make friends, and fit in at school. So the, the title of the series is Where's My Place? And the main theme is about um, making friends, understanding where you fit in, and not trying to be something that you're not. Um, now, I'm not going to go through the whole uh, story for this one, but I'm going to give you an example of how the images can really help uh, the story um, have a bit more richness to it. So I have, I'm actually going to play some audio as I go through this one here. <clears throat> Oof, I'm, hold on a second here. Uh, and I'll just share certain sections so that you can kind of read along. Sure, I share my sound. Okay, so here we go. Moving. The car stops. Let's stop here. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Angela. Hello, Angela. This one is nice. Yeah, I like it. It has a big yard. Yep. Put away your phone! Oh. <gasps> Sorry! Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Let's open the door and go inside. This is the living room. Sorry. Harry? Huh? Uh, yes, yes. Yellow. Nice. Let's go to the kitchen next. It's over there. Let's go. This is the kitchen. Oh, this is great! We can have dinner parties here. Yes, it's great for parties. Can I play in the yard? All right, I'll stop it there for a second. Um, so the the kind of thing that I wanted to show there was that's right at the beginning of a low level level reader, um, but the the pictures really help with the establishment of the characters. Uh, so the main uh, the father in this story, um, he's actually kind of uh, uh, written after myself. Um, he's kind of, in all of the scenes, he's a bit disengaged and he's kind of on his cell phone. It's a bit self-critical of myself, but I tend to do this to my family quite a bit um, and get into a little bit of trouble. It's something that's really familiar to kids. I think a lot of kids would have possibly a parent who might be dazing out on their phone a little bit too much. Um, so it's a bit contemporary and there's a bit of humor in the way that's told. Uh, it's just one sort of small example, but the, we get a real sense of the characters, um, even though the language is, again, um, very simple. Um, all of the stories, the first uh, book starts up quite straight and simple, 
And by the fourth book, it usually ends up in a very kind of Hayao-esque um, parallel reality kind of um, thing. So in this series at the end, um, he ends up going into a dream world. And yeah, uh, you'll have to read it yourself to get the, the whole story. Um, so another thing that we think about these, I've already kind of touched on it, but plot really matters. Um, again, in a very short graded reader, often we're not able to get a deeper story that has a, 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 a plot that is complex and has different themes in it. Um, but one of our beliefs, yeah, is that plot really matters. Now I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the plot from our level three series um, to give you an idea how um, kind of crazy and interesting the, the stories can get. So there's here's the four books, uh, the first, one, uh, th so the name of this series is Back to Save the Earth. Uh, the first story, No More Chores, starts out with main characters, uh, Mia and Noah. And they're about seven years old at the beginning. And at the beginning, um, they're not really happy because they have to do chores for their, um, you know, house chores, and it's boring, and they just don't want to do it. And then uh, they get this brilliant idea. They know that they have this inventor, Uncle Zorn, who had disappeared and he left some unfinished machine in a closet somewhere and told them never to go inside. Uh, but they realized that this was something that could help them with their chores. So against, against their better judgment, they go into the closet and they find a list of parts that are missing. And they go on an adventure to collect the different parts that they need to complete this device. And, um, the, so the, the device in this series is a choose your own adventure style. So there's a map um, and the learners can actually, the, the story is a bit non-linear. They go to this map and then they choose where they want to go next. And they end up getting items and having to exchange them with different characters in order to get through the story. At the end of the story, they end up building uh, a chore robot. So they this, this, this big robot emerges that can uh, do all of their chores for them. And they're delighted. Now, the second story, um, Into the Earth, is where things start to get a bit weird. <clears throat> and in, yeah, so in the second story, at the beginning, we find out that this, you can see him in the corner here, this um, kind of entrepreneurial type guy um, had asked them to borrow their robot because he was really impressed with it. And he says that it will help his mother, who's really busy. Um, Am I almost out of time here? What time do I finish? No, no, I'm good, right? You're fine. Yeah. What, you what time. time do I finish again? Five after five. Five after five. Okay, okay. I'm going to go a little bit quicker here, but yeah. <clears throat> um, right. So this this entrepreneurial character had borrowed it, and then fast forward just a few years later, the robots are everywhere. Um, everyone's buying them, and they start to do things on their own. So there's a little bit of a contemporary. I wrote this years before um, uh, ChatGPT came out, but if you wanted to kind of talk about that with your kids, it could uh, raise that. So they find out the robots are kind of doing, they have their own plans. They find out the robots really like hamsters, uh, for example, and they decide to disguise as robots and follow them. And they uncover a plot that the robots are planning to take over uh, the, the planet. So in book three, uh, they try to find their uncle Zorn and they succeed and they, Zorn is trying to find the unicorns, which he believes will save the planet. They team up with the unicorns and they battle the robots. And in the end of the story, they, the, the unicorns and the children win. However, the earth is uh, destroyed and horribly polluted beyond repair. Uh, so it's a bit of a bittersweet ending there. And then the final story, they realize that they need to go into space to find a brand new planet to replace Earth. Um, and this is quite a neat story, I think. So in this fourth story, uh, you're going on an adventure through space. And at various points, they scan different planets to see if they will support life, if they're a good replacement for Earth. And the children have to, um, using kind of their understanding of uh, what is needed to sustain human life. 
they can kind of make decisions in the story based on the on on the scans, the information in the scans, and um, yeah, eventually get through the story. Some of the best parts in the story are when they choose the wrong planet. So the fails are really fun, which also gives it a bit of rereadability. Um, some of our kids will read these four or five times, and then later on go to the to the the planets where uh, things go wrong, um, just to kind of find out. There's a little scene from that one. So they are blasting off into space and getting used to life on a on a spaceship. The series finishes with the children, uh, everyone realizing that there is no replacement planet for Earth. So they decide to go back uh, to Earth. And now they've made the decision on their own. Now they're much older uh, to clean up the Earth together. Um, so yeah, starts the beginning of the story. It starts with them avoiding chores and avoiding cleaning up and ends with them making the decision on their own to uh, clean up the planet and make it a better place. <clears throat> So yeah, just wanted to give you a uh, run through of that series. Each series has a, a plot that's equally deep, zany, full of humor and that kind of thing. So their kids definitely really get into them. Um, and it's, yeah, something that they can sink their teeth into. So um, I do want to tell you a little bit about the bonus features. So this again goes a little bit away from extensive reading, but if your children are really into these readers in particular, and you want to do more, you want to give them more stuff related to them. Um, we've got some excellent music that goes with it that children really love, um, as well as lesson plans. And that's um, different kinds of things that can help teachers to use the, mu the music in class. And as you can see with the art style that we've used, um, we've gone with something a bit edgy and, and interesting for kids. The music is the same as well. Um, I'm going to give you a little example here. Um, this is what you're looking at now is actually a lyrics page from one of the songs. Um, so I'll give you a minute and a half compilation uh, of some of the music that goes, uh, the story-based graded music that goes along with these stories. Where is it coming from? What's that sound? I can feel it. It's coming up, up, up through the floor. What's that sound? I can hear it. It's getting louder, I can't take it anymore. Show them what you can do. May's life, May's life. It's better than school. May's life, May's life. It's better than school. There we go. I'll stop with that there. Yeah, so, you know, fun, interesting music. It's not not hokey. It's not something that kids will dismiss. And it's not your typical, you know, how's the weather, colors, numbers, that kind of thing. Uh, it's story-based music. Um, and it's also really weaved into the audiobooks. Um, so when you're listening to the audiobooks, there are parts where it kind of breaks into song. Um, yeah, kind of like, a, you know, a Disney musical or something like that. Um, so... Bonus feature number two are the activities. So we have separate textbooks that have a bit of vocabulary um, practice in it, as well as some really fun communication activities that, that go along with the stories. Um, for example, going on with the, the first um, story that I showed you that was about moving to different houses and stuff, we've got a listening activity that helps the children to learn how to draw basic furniture. Then we have a listening jigsaw activity where the students will listen and then draw that, use those drawings to put the furniture into the house and then um, speak together and tell each other where to put the furniture in the house. Um, this is another one in, in the story. There's a, a little char imaginary character that likes candy. So this is something that kind of 
does give a chance to use prepositions and locations and room sort of language. Um, the 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 concept between behind the activities is not um, a standard language course. It's not here. Let's teach this language point and give the children a chance to use it. Really, it allows them to start to try to use some of the language that they've learned through the stories. Um, and there's a lot of magic in that. I mean, what I what I've seen is children using words from the stories that were not explicitly taught to them. Um, so it does kind of give them an, an, another, um, I think Rob Peacock mentioned how many times and how meaningful the encounters with different words need to be for us to acquire new vocabulary. Um, so this gives them lots of opportunities to again, encounter those in a new context. Well, same context, but in a, in a productive way where they're actually speaking and talking. Uh, this is a strategy game and David might enjoy the, the shapes of the, on the board here. This is a little similar to the game that we play online, uh, but this is a strategy based game um, uh, connected to the level three story. This is the a battle to, for the earth between the unicorns and the robots. Um, in this one, there's lots of different factories that pump out robots and the, the, play, uh, the students play both the robots and the unicorns and they um, fight over the fate of the earth. There are these different areas of natural beauty that the robots try to pollute and the unicorns try to defend it. Um, and it, it really pulls out a lot of the language that are in the stories. Uh, this is build a creature um, and talk about it, more of a creative task. This is um, an, an activity where they would be looking at features of different planets and logging the information. Um, it goes on and on. We have just tons of these activities and they're all really fun and get the kids into a topic and get them communicating. Um, so the last thing also, we do have an app. I saw um, different presentations did show LMSs and that sort of thing. I, I wasn't planning to show much of this, uh, but the Gamerize Dictionary app is something that can be used not just with um, our readers, but also with, with any readers or any textbook or any course. It's a gamified um, learner dictionary is what we're calling it. Um, but I snuck in after watching some of the presentations, just a quick little 30 second teaser video to give you uh, an idea. Um, but for us, our students will learn vocabulary before reading or even after reading um, on the Gamerize dictionary. And so it's, it's kind of connected and it gives them things that they can do at home as well. So it's 30 seconds um, on the Gamerize dictionary. <laughs> Hungry, mouth, my English lessons are fun. <laughs> So yeah, not, not a main focus of the presentation today, but if anyone's curious, um, I would love to, to hear um, any questions or anything like that about the Gamerize Dictionary. Yeah, so the way we envision our courses uh, with the Awesome Adventure series is that the kids have uh, the readers, the music, things that they can use at home as well as in class. Of course, the activities like the save the, the strategy game that I showed you would be something that they would use in class with friends. Um, and really get them communicating. We do have phonics courses as well as as well that have a lot of uh, reading embedded in them. Um, and then yeah, the Gamerize Dictionary app. So we've got all, the full package of things that can kind of be used together. Um, and that's basically the everything that I wanted to say there. And we're just about up on time. Um, if anyone is interested in checking out our books, you can go to aspress.com. Uh, we've put up um, the level one of our level two series for one of the books is free on Kindle right now. So if you go to our website, aspress.com, we can get you a free copy, a digital copy of that. Um, soon they'll be on X reading, I believe, as well. Um, and uh, yeah, but just check uh, on our website. You'll find um, all of the materials. There's extra worksheets and stuff that go with it. There's lesson plans. Um, so please check that out. The Gamerize Dictionary as well, you can find through this site. Uh, and if you have any questions or, or comments, uh, I'd love to hear them now, or um, you can contact me uh, through 
actually, yeah, I should throw my email into the chat there as well. Um, yep, I'll throw the email into the chat, but yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Um, any questions or comments? This is the last presentation, so feel free to, you know, if you have questions, there's no issue with the time. I've just noticed somebody said, I think that there, the music isn't background music. So when I was showing you that slide for a minute and a half there, could you not hear the music? I heard it. Oh, good. <laughs> it's always great to hear that at the end. Oh, okay. When did you start? Uh, so a couple of questions there. When did you start writing the books? Uh, I think our we started in about 2018 um, would be when we, I believe, finished our first reader. Who draws them? Uh, we work with probably about six or seven different artists um, for different things for the, the textbooks and for the, the readers. But if you do take a look, one, one goes by the name of Omar and another one um, is from Italy and her name is Roberta. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Comment is, thanks a lot. Plenty of ideas for my ESL school graders to do our target language activities. Yeah. Thank you.